Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so, so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, can we call for that daily bread before we go into the broadcast? Are you ready? Are you expecting anything today? Oh, sure, I am. Praise God. So, so let's stand together in faith as we declare. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today and I receive my daily bread right now. It's coming to me, ministering angels. Go bring that which is mine today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now you remember David said he daily loads us with benefit. I remember the day the Lord opened my eyes to see that. I said, uh oh. David actually already said it that he daily loads us with benefit. So Jesus telling us, when he was teaching the disciples how to pray, to say, give us this day our daily bread. It's not something new. It's something God has already have been doing. Praise God. David said it. He daily loads us with benefit. And Jesus said, hey, make a demand. Make a demand every day. Give us this day. Ah, baby. So that's why we do this. And, and don't just wait for us. It should become your pattern. Praise God. Do it every day when you wake up. Father, I receive today's benefit. I make a demand for my daily bread today. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now yesterday we began to talk about the purpose for the law and commandments. Praise God. So when, when Psalm chapter 78 and verse 5. I remember I was explaining something to you yesterday about how God establishes his testimony. So I told you when you begin to walk with God, one thing he's going to do in your life is to make his footprint in your affairs. Make his footprint in your life that he is there with you. Praise God. Now, he told us, in Hebrews 13, say he has said he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, so that we will boldly say, The Lord is our helper, we will not fear what any man will do unto me. Now, that statement, it's not just for us to quote, that statement is a truth that we walk with in our heart, and because we walk with such truth, the manifestation of that truth becomes evident in our lives so don't just confess it where is the evidence that god is with you now you're, you're watching me right now i want to ask you this question It'll take a few moments because if you don't get this going further may really not benefit you take a few moments right now and think beyond the group thing beyond the celebration you do in church, beyond the company that you work with, you as a person, what is the evidence that God is with you? Now don't start telling me about the generative. He's not with me. I wouldn't have woken up this morning. Unbelievers wake up. <laughs> you understand? Every day. Don't tell me if he's not with me. I, I would have had an accident. <laughs> nah, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a real personal encounter that has happened in your life i'm not just talking about yesterday or two weeks ago i'm talking about your life look at your life for a few moments and ask yourself that question what is the evidence that god is in my life what is the evidence that god is with me now let me tell you one truth god didn't come to you the day you got born again. Now that's one mistake people make. See? No, it's not the day you got born again that God came to you. God has been there with you. Praise God. From your mother's womb. Now not everyone. That's another day stop. But you see, if you are born again today, it is proof that God has been with you from the womb. Jesus spoke about children. He said, their angels always behold the face of the Father. Meaning, even as children, God had marked them. 
not everyone. That's another day stock. But you see, you being saved, you getting to that point that you, you, you came to that understanding that I need to be saved. See, that didn't happen by chance. That was the working of God in you to produce that salvation. So he caused you at that time to hear his word. Because you see, at that stage now, he wants to have an active walk with you. So when I ask this question, I'm not just telling you to just sit and start thinking from when I got born again two years ago, how can I prove that God is with me? No, I'm talking about your whole life. What is your testimony? I mean, real testimony now. That you know, you know beyond any reasonable doubt that this is God. Now, every child of God is supposed to have that. Now, it doesn't have to be spectacular. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be spectacular like another person's own. It doesn't have to be, oh, one day God walked into my room and sat down with me and he was having a conversation with me for 43 minutes, eight, 43 minutes, 52 seconds. Because I checked the time. No, it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. But you see, as simple as there are times or moments of salvation that you knew this was not ordinary. You know this thing didn't just happen. There is a force or power behind me that rescued me from this situation. You will know it. Not just the one you, you know, sometimes I bought a new car. It, if, if God did not empower me to buy that new car, I don't think I would have bought that new car. That's not what I'm talking about. So take a moment and ask yourself, do I have such? Now listen, I was explaining something yesterday about Jacob and Israel. So because God established a testimony, what was that testimony? A testimony of blessing, a testimony of his presence, a testimony of him being with them. Now, that alone, that testimony alone secludes them or separates them from every other nation as a people. Now. That testimony separates them from every other nation. And I'll tell you this, even as an individual, the testimony of God in your life is what separates you. Because you, you, you realize that when it comes to certain things, you are just different. And why are you different? Not because you're too intelligent, not because you're the smartest, not because you're the fastest. No, there is just that grace that is upon your life that you know, you know it's not your effort. You know it. And you, you look at others, you might be children from the same home, see? And then you look at others and why am I different? Why am I different? You see, the moment that difference has something to do with the righteousness of God, then it means God is the one that is separating you and he's separating you for a reason. Not because he hates every other person. No, no, no. But you see, because in, in the walk with God, you have a very important role to play. It's not enough to think God selected me by grace. But you see, the choice to follow was yours. The way he selected you, he may have selected every other person, but they did not obey his voice to follow him. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. They did not follow him. But you, when you heard his voice, you decided to follow him. And hear me, in every generation, God looks out for people that, that he wants to work with. In every generation, in every family, God looks out for people who are, whose hearts are ready to work with him. And then he will draw near to them and begin to manifest his grace and establish his testimony in them. Now, the moment God starts a work with you, I want you to hear me. 
God will never start a work with you that will finish or end with you alone. Every work that God starts, because God is an eternal God, everything He is doing, He is looking at eternity, because that's where He lives. Just like they say, anything when a politician gets into office, now in most democracies, you have termed, um, termed them, what they call them now, office. They get into office for certain terms. So for some five years, to some four years, you know, like that. So a politician gets into office and everything he's trying to do, he's looking at the terms in his office of the terms he was going to spend. So some have two years at best two, for two terms of eight years, like we do in our country and they do in the US. Two years, sorry, two terms of four years. That means eight years together, but you finish the four first and go for re-election and after the two terms you can contest again so a politician is thinking anything i'm going to do i'm thinking of how i'm going to use this to gain the advantage in four years time when i'll go ask them for my votes again and then um i'm thinking of if they give me their vote i'm thinking of another four years so i want to be able to point out and say these are the things i did in four years or these are the things i did in eight years so that's how he thinks one who has two years will only think of two years. Then one who has, now think about one who has eternity. Praise God. He has eternity. So he's taking his time building precept upon precept. And everything he's doing, he's looking at the end. That's what I was trying to bring out. The man that has four years looking at the end of four years. The man that has eight years looking at the end of eight years. The man that has 10 years looking at the end of 10 years. So the man who lives in eternity is looking at eternity. Praise God. That's what God does. So everything God starts with you is looking at eternity. And what, how does that work? If he's working with you, then he's looking at how this is work is going to be transferred to your children. That's why children are so important with God. Never, never, I'm telling the truth, never downplay the place of children. Never downplay the place of a seed. If you have walked with God, God always, even Jesus, he said, listen, he says, when he makes his soul an offering for sin, Guess what he will be looking at in Isaiah chapter 53? He will see his seed. The seed will prolong his days. Now we are that seed, praise God. Because scriptures tell that seed is Christ. So we are that seed of Jesus. So when he sees that, when God saw that seed, that look, a seed is going to come that is going to prolong his days. Praise God. Now, I said all that to say this. He, he, he establishes his testimony. So when you have confirmed that there is a testimony in my life, and that testimony is from the Lord, the day you recognize that testimony, guess what God does next? We'll see it in, in Psalm 78 and verse 5. And, let me start reading verse For he established his testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. The day, the moment you recognize that, hey, this is God. The next thing God begins to do in your life is to put laws where because of that testimony. What is the law for? I'll tell you the reason for the law. Now, it's okay to have an experience with God. It's okay to walk with God. Every walk of God is not a one-time thing. That's where a lot of believers make that mistake. They just think, I mean, God supplied, you didn't have any money. And it's time for you to maybe renew your rent, pay certain bills. And you don't have enough money or you don't have the money at all. And then you cry to the Lord. And miraculously, the Lord sends help. And you know this is a miracle. Someone may walk up to you and say, Hey, I was praying last night and God said I should come and give you this money. Whoa, wow, praise God. Hallelujah. And then you're excited. 
Now, it's left for you to think, now that's a testimony. Although it's not established yet. Follow me. So you're excited. Wow, look what God has done for me. See what God has done. You know, adding up, you're telling everybody, wonderful. But hey, guess what? You can pay that rent that year. And then the next thing you, you go start worrying again and wondering by the next time, I don't know, I'm going to pay this year. I thought I was going to get a good job by this time. If I had a good job by now, you know, I would have had some savings that I used to pay the rent. Because the testimony have not been established in you yet. But you see, thank you Lord Jesus, our time is up. Praise God. Our time is up. Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. I'm going to start from here tomorrow. Let's just pray. Father, thank you. The heavens are opened over us right now. And great blessing is being poured out from heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is empowering you and I see someone finishing a building. I see someone finishing a building. Because the Lord is saying he's opening a, a, a door for you. He's opening a door for you in a few days time. And that building will be finished and accomplished. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I had to share that as we're praying. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.